iPadOS 26 Beta 3 is officially out to all developers, and let's see exactly what Apple did in the last two weeks to help alleviate some of the bugs that I was personally dealing with in Beta 2, which were a little bit detrimental to my overall workflow. So without further ado, let's see what they change, what's new, and what they fixed. Let's get into it. But now before we continue, definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy updates like this video because it motivates us to make more videos like this moving forward and also leave a comment down below of some of the issues you've dealt with or some of the new features you've liked over the first two beta 1 and beta 2 iterations if you are testing it out on iPadOS or iOS. But now, let's see exactly what was different. Well, the right everyone, let's get right into this video. And first, let's start off with the build size. So you're looking at about 8.7 gigs for the iPad. And just for context sake, I am using an M4 iPad Pro 13 inch. So this is the newest version of the iPad. And I did actually look at it on the iOS version side with my iPhone 16 Pro Max, and I was closer to 10 gigabytes. So give yourself 15 to 20 gigs of open storage in order to install this and install it correctly with no issues whatsoever. And again, because of the fact that it's so big, it you know remains yet to be seen exactly what they did or why it's so big, but, but let's see if they were able to squash any bugs. And then in terms of the build number, if we go into our settings, go into about, then go to where it says iPadOS version. You're looking at about 23A5287G. So we are going from, I believe the last version was H, and we are going down, ideally going down to B and then A, and then finally the RC edition. And, and this does bode well because I do believe that the public beta should be coming out next week. So again, it's all your own risk when it comes to this stuff, but the public beta should be out next week at some point, and we'll let you guys know when that is. But now in terms of what's new, the first thing that came up is if we go into our lock screen, long press down here to customize it, add a new kind of lock screen, we do get some new wallpapers. So of course you can see that everything's loading just a little bit faster than normal. It looks a little bit better with iPadOS beta three or iPadOS 26. But if we go down here, we have three new kind of hues or color versions. I believe it's like sky, halo, and then ruby in terms of the different colors. Nothing too crazy here, just new color options with the same type of iPadOS 26 wallpaper scheme with some new hues, but that's always a welcome addition. Another one that came into play is for on the iPadOS side, they actually fixed the dock situation where the big icons now do fit, at least from a form factor and UI perspective down here, which is great to see. And then for people on the iOS side, they did now center the dock. So whereas previously, if you had three different applications in your dock on iOS, it would still go to the left, which is kind of weird and it wouldn't center it, but now it should be all good to go. The next new addition is if we go into the files application, the new native player actually got a nice little upgrade here. So on the bottom right hand corner, we now have these two dots that are going to be persistent in terms of options. Before, I believe they were available in terms of playback speed, as well as enhancing the dialogue. You know, you can enhance it, enhance more, and then isolate it completely. That was there before in terms of options, but now it's readily available with one less step to access them. And then you also have this new ellipses here, which gives you the show text when you are dealing with a video that does have some text on here, like you see here. And these are all features that are on things like Apple TV and stuff like that. And they were in the native player, but now it's easier to access when you are playing back a video. And then another cool one, which is for those people that have been using macOS are now coming over to iPadOS. You can see that we have the mouse cursor here, but in macOS, if you were to lose a mouse cursor somewhere on a second screen or whatever the case may be, you'd have to shake your trackpad in order to find it. And then it would enlarge the trackpad or the actual cursor. And now you can do that. So if I swing it like this, you can see that the cursor has actually gotten bigger and it's good to, so it's easier to find things like that. This will be great if you are using an extended monitor with your iPad, if you do lose the mouse, but it's cool to see that this is now a feature that came onto iPad OS 26. And then comes the liquid glass design. So of course we have liquid glass, but if you hold liquid glass side by side between beta one, two, and three, you'll notice that it's getting even less and less transparent. It's adding a little bit more fuzz and it's making it, I guess, a little bit more legible in terms of readability and things like that but it's not nearly as glass-like as it was before. And some great examples, if we go over to 9 to 5 Mac, we go on to the what's new here, you see that there are some differences on a per app basis. So for instance, in the music application, it is completely different, but then you have on the photos app down here, where it does look relatively the same. And then you have the podcast app where it's again, completely different. It's almost like they got, got rid of liquid glass completely. They don't care about it anymore. And it looks like Apple's backtracking a little bit in terms of why they're doing the liquid glass. I do prefer them maybe creating some sort of scale that we can kind of change, maybe like a trackpad speed cursor mover, 
where if you go all the way to the left, it's fully transparent. If you go all the way to the right, it's completely opaque. That could be a great little middle ground or compromise because some people did have readability issues. I, for one, didn't and I actually like the old liquid glass. Like This doesn't look nearly as futuristic or nearly as different as it once did when iPadOS 26 Beta 1 came out, and it doesn't look nearly as good as it did when they were showing it off at WWDC. And now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there were two big bugs that were persisting with me. The first one has to be the connectivity to AirPods. So for example, I would use my AirPods throughout the day, especially on my iPhone on iOS 26, and then for some reason, they would kind of disconnect. But the interesting part was that if I went into my settings here, tapped on this little icon, it would still show up as something that was connected via Bluetooth to my device, whether it was my iPad or my iPhone. And even though I was tapping on there to connect it, it would still not connect to the AirPods and it would play whatever music or media, whether it was YouTube or Apple Music, it would play it on the actual speakers and it would play it out loud. After a reset, I would have to restart my iPhone or my iPad in order to connect it. And yes, 100% of the time after a quick reset, it would connect to my AirPods and the issue would be done with. But again, it was something that I was dealing with and I had to reset it probably every other day. And it would usually happen at the end of the day at night when I was walking my dog. So it was something that was persisting throughout the beta 2 update. And again, now that should be fixed. And it looks like it's something that Apple has alleviated. Secondly, it's going to have to do with files and file types and external SSD. I was having a lot of issues with my external SSD, as well as different applications having trouble figuring out if something was a PNG or a JPEG. It would kind of just gray out those files when those files were totally normal. And again, it's something that Apple did alleviate in the files application and with external SSDs. And hopefully, you know, your mileage may vary, but hopefully it is fixed throughout beta 3. And I'll let you guys know with an update as time goes on. And then lastly, let's go into our battery settings to see how we've been doing. Again, I love the new battery UI in the settings menu. It just gives you so much more to look at from an iPadOS perspective. But you can see if we go into view all battery usage and we go on a day like Wednesday, I got about six hours of screen on time here with 94% usage. I got about three hours of screen on time here with 93% usage. Today on Monday, 55% usage on about three hours and 46 minutes. So I could get probably seven or eight hours of screen on time with some intensive tasks. And it's good to know that when it does come out to the public with iPad OS and being able to just use it as a media consumption machine, I would definitely get anywhere from 10 to 12 hours, which is good to see on the iPad. So battery life, a little bit of a hit during the beta program, but it should get a little bit better, especially if you are using intensive tasks, which is broken down in this section right here. But that is everything new with iPadOS 26 Beta 3. Let's finish up this video. Those are all the changes with iPadOS 26 Beta 3. Again, we're definitely on the come up here. Some bug fixes that were very important to get you some quality of life workflow improvements, especially for myself, some new features overall. But again, we're getting closer to the public beta. And then finally, the ultimate version that comes out in September. But let's see exactly what Apple does in the meantime. But that'll do it for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone. I love iPadOS.